Better buckle up those seat belts, because you're about to meet the amazing girls of Daraja Academy, a free boarding school for Kenyan girls who couldn't afford to go to high school, but are now changing the world, and the talented people that believe in their dreams. My name is Jason Doherty, and this is Daraja Means Bridge, the podcast. I would challenge anybody to watch the news for 20 minutes and not come away feeling this world is a pretty bleak place. There's famine, climate change, poverty, disease. It's easy to catch yourself thinking, what can I do about it? Well, my name is Jason Doherty, and I'm here to tell you there is something out there. There is a cause that changes everything. That cause is girls' education. And before you think, hey, what is a girl being in school going to do? you should know that there are 62 million girls in the world right now who should be in school but aren't. And that's a big deal. The Brookings Institute did a study that said if every girl was in school that could be, that in the year 2045, there would be 2 billion fewer people on the face of the earth. 2045 is not that far away. The reason is educated girls get married later, they have fewer children, those children are healthier, infant mortality rates drop, the financial stability of a region goes up, everything changes when you educate girls. My wife Jenny and I founded Daraja Academy in 2009. Daraja Academy is a free boarding school for Kenyan girls of material poverty. So these are girls that couldn't go to school in any other way. Their parents earn less than $2 a day, and there's 18 million Kenyans that fall into that category. As you can tell, I'm not a professional podcaster. I'm an American history teacher who started a girl's school in Africa. I'm recovering from an amputation during a pandemic, and I want everybody to know how incredible this school is, because we might be small, but we're changing the world. When we started, only 50% of the girls that were leaving the 8th grade went on to the ninth grade. And that's because you had to pay to go to high school in 2009. Well, if you looked on the internet, it would say that high school is now free in Kenya. But it, not, it isn't really, because you do have to buy your uniform, your books, your pens, your notebooks. If there's not a school within walking distance, you have to pay for boarding. You have to buy a mattress. And if you're a family that's scratching by and just trying to get food on the table, those things are totally out of of your reach. And the thing is, education is the best way to change yourself and your family. Because when girls are educated, they put their money back into their families. So here I am. I'm a 6'5", 260-pound male. And I'm kind of proud of guys because educated guys reinvest 30 to 40% of the money they make back into their families. Did you know that educated girls put 80 to 90% of their money back into their families? In the 12 years that we've operated, I've watched our alumni put their little brothers and their little sisters through school. I've seen a girl who put her mom through school and she ended up becoming a kindergarten teacher. Educated women do stuff. They change things. They are the answer. So this podcast, Daraja Means Bridge, is about introducing everybody to the girls of Daraja, to the incredible people that support Daraja, because the only reason these girls are in school is because the world decided that they should be. My wife and I aren't rich. In fact, we were in debt when we started this. So it can happen. You can do good stuff in the world, and you can live a happy life. This podcast is about hope. So I've already said it, education is the key to changing your life. But Daraja Academy does more than teach math and English and history. We are also an empowerment school. We have an empowerment curriculum called WISH, which stands for Women of Integrity, Strength, and Hope. That class meets every week for four years, and these girls find their voice. They understand their value. They they learn how to stand up and talk for themselves. There's a huge sex ed component. It is the heart that beats at Daraja Academy. And our graduates come out and they're leaders. But we're even more than an educating and empowerment school. Our girls also do a ton of community service. And we do that for a reason. So when our ninth graders go home on their term breaks, remember we're a boarding school. 
and they go home, they start to work in their communities. Each one has to do 15 hours of community service on their term breaks. They work at clinics, they work at schools, they work at hospitals and old folks homes. And what they do is they start to see themselves as a part of the community, not a person who's on the outside of it. And what's interesting is the community starts to see teenage girls as something of value. It's a wonderful double-edged sword and by the time our girls leave, they've got experience. They know what they want to do and what they don't. So when we started Daraja in 2009, we originally had thought that we would just be a day school and girls could walk up to a campus and, and go home at night. Um, and then we thought, no, let's do something bigger. Let's have an effect on the country as opposed to just a community. So we decided that we were going to draw girls from all over the country. So we have Muslim girls, and Catholic girls and Protestant girls, girls of every religion, study at Daraja peacefully. You know, the world could really learn something by peeking through the school's gates. Girls from 37 different tribal communities came in here over the years. And some of those communities had history of conflict with each other. That's why that empowerment curriculum is so important. Because when they leave, they know how to settle disputes peacefully. What's funny is there are very few rules at Daraja. In fact, Compared to most schools, we don't have any rules. So a lot of kids show up at Daraja and they say, there's no rules at this school, which is kind of true. We don't have school bells. We expect the girls to manage their own time. We have clocks. They shouldn't be late. And we also don't have rules, but we have four pillars that hold up the bridge. And they're pretty straightforward. And they kind of cover every single thing that, that a person could do in their life. So these are them. Pillar number one, be accountable for the role you play at Daraja, neither neglecting nor abusing it. Pillar two, maintain open communication, speak honestly and listen respectfully. Pillar number three, embrace differences, treat all with dignity and respect. And pillar number four, each day, leave it better than you found it. That's it. That's how we run our school. And guess what? It runs really, really well. Now, that's not to say we don't have problems. These are teenagers. Teenagers are the same all around the world. No matter how grateful you are to be somewhere, when you live together, things happen. Maybe we'll talk about some of those later on in the podcast. So I've told you a bunch of statistics about girls' education. But what does girls' education mean to a girl? I learned what girls' education was all about in 2010. You know, when you offer a scholarship to a family that couldn't afford to send their girl to high school, you've got a lot of people lining up for those scholarships. So every year we do something called student selection, where we get into our vehicle and we drive around the country looking for girls that will come to Daraja. We interview them in their home areas. We get to meet parents. And it really gives us a good idea of who is going to best capitalize on the opportunity that we're giving them. Now, probably 300 girls every year sign up for 30 spots at Daraja. It's brutal because you have to turn away girls that are incredible. In fact, every student selection, I break down at one point. I mean, I break down in tears. Like, I can't do this. This is too hard. But then you remember the girls that are getting the opportunity, who are going to change their lives, who are going to bring their families with them. Those girls are going to make it so that this world is better in the future so that girls don't have to apply for a scholarship to go to high school. Our girls will affect change in their country. I know it. So anyway, back to student selection. See if this sounds familiar. There's a presidential election. The person that loses says cheating took place and people get violent. Well, that happened in 2007 in Kenya. There was post-election violence that went across the country, and it was brutal. You had neighbors attacking neighbors. People got killed. People lost their homes. So in 2010, we actually did student interviews at an IDP camp. That st stands for Internally Displaced Persons. So that's essentially a refugee who's in their own country. The place where we did this interview had about 200 people who had lost their homes in the election violence because people rose up and they attacked them and they had to flee with whatever they could carry. It was really sad, but man, what an opportunity to give girls like that a scholarship. 
So we had to drive about two hours south of Daraja Academy. And that was a really quiet car ride. Everybody was thinking about these girls that had seen more than we probably will ever have to see in our lives. We were going to have to have a conversation with them and maybe turn them down for a scholarship. It was terrifying, to be honest with you. But I can't imagine that it was even half as scary as it was for those girls. Now, going into a student interview thinking, what if I give the wrong answer? What if I don't get a chance to come? It's tough. There's a lot of tension in some of these things. So anyway, we were driving through a forest, and then we came to a clearing. And it was a large clearing, probably three football fields. And homes had been built. Now, these people had arrived on this land, and they were allowed to squat there. But they built their homes with whatever they could get their hands on. They were super industrious, you know, scrap wood. They used sacks for the roofs. It was incredible. And they were starting to plant crops. They were grazing cows and goats. They were starting over. But in the middle of this field, there were two large, white, brown tents. And on the side, in light blue letters, like the United Nations, it said UNHRC the United Nations Human Rights Commission. Now that put something in my stomach, just one of those, whoa, this is real. We drove up and next to one of those tents, they set up a desk and we interviewed four girls. And one of them's name was Jamima. Daraja only exists because people around the world just like you believe that it should. It's about empathy and it's about hope. Right now, you can totally change the trajectory of a girl's life by going to www.daraja-academy.org. Because one year of schooling changes a girl's life, and a high school diploma changes everything. This place is so much more than a school. It's a social movement fueled by love. It's time for you to cross that bridge. Because Daraja means bridge, and you are Daraja.